Welcome to Vegetation Remote Sensing, a video series developed as part of the Advanced Remote Sensing and GIS course at the Australian National University. I am Marta Yebra and in this video series I will present some examples of applications of remote sensing to assess vegetation. But before going into the application, with this short uh, video, I would like to briefly introduce some key concepts. If you ask uh, different remote sensing scientists about uh, what vegetation is for them, you may have different responses because vegetation can be looked into many different ways uh, depending on the research field and the final application of the remote sensing vegetation product. For example, vegetation can be looked at uh, like a land cover or land use, can mean biodiversity, biomass, carbon sink, or fuel if you are talking to a bushfire researcher. But whatever is the definition, as vegetation is the dominant component in most ecosystems, we can use remote, sen remote sensing to routinely gather information for characterizing and managing these uh, organic systems. Why is this possible? Because as you, uh, as you, you heard in previous uh, videos, uh, uh, about their optical remote sensing, the vegetation has a spectral signature very different from other land cover types. These spectral variations facilitate fairly precise uh, detecting, identifying and monitoring of vegetation on land surface and in some instances even within the oceans and other water bodies. Thus, uh, we can continually assess changes in forests, grasslands, shrublands, crops and so on often at a quantitative level. The surface uh, reflectance uh, of two or more wavelengths can be combined into a single value to highlight a particular property of vegetation while minimizing the influence of external factors. This single value is called vegetation index. More than 150 vegetation indices have been published in scientific uh, literature and have been used, for example, to detect the presence and relative abundance of vegetation moisture, uh, leaf pigments, uh, carbon, light use efficiency, or, for example, to map uh, fire scars and severity. The, the most well-known index uh, is the, uh, the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index that uh, was developed uh, to detect uh, light green canopies in multispectral remote sensing data. The NDVI is calculated from the visible and the near-infrared uh, light reflected by vegetation. Healthy vegetation will have high values of NDVI since it absorbs most of the visible light that hits it and reflects a large portion of the near infrared light. Unhealth vegetation uh, or sparse vegetation reflects more of the visible light and less in the near infrared, near infrared light and therefore presents uh, lower values of NDVI. Finally, bare soil presents very low values of NDVI, making it easy, for example, to apply thresholds to filter it out the vegetation. Uh, sorry, to filter it out the soil uh, for vegetation applications. This animation uh, shows uh, monthly NDVI values uh, from 2000 to present, derived from Moody's data. Dark green areas show where there was a lot of green leaf growth. Uh, light greens, so where there was some green uh, leaf growth uh, and tan areas, so little or no growth at all. As you can see, there is a lot of uh, spatial and temporal variability in the NDVI values globally. This table here presents a few other samples of vegetation indices uh, that I have grouped into two categories, greenness and water content indices. Greenness indices such the previously mentioned NDVI or here the, the Enhanced uh, Vegetation Index EVI, or the Visible Atmospheric Resistance Index vary. Combine reflectance values in the near infrared and, and the visible region of the spectra to measure the general quantity and degree of green vegetation. 
Some applications of this uh, vegetation indices include uh, phenology studies, land use and climatological impact assessments, and vegetation productivity modeling, as uh, you will see in the next videos of this series. The EDI and the VAR differ from the NDVI because they include a band in the blue to minimize the influence of the atmosphere and also to be more sensitive to high vegetation cover. NDVI tend to saturate in those situations. Um, water content vegetation indices like the normalized difference, difference infrared index in NDVI or the moisture stress index MSI it, provide a measure of the amount of water contained in the foliage canopy. Water content is an important quantity of vegetation because higher water content indicates healthier vegetation that is likely to grow faster and be more fire resistant. Applications include, for example, canopy stress analysis, productivity prediction and modeling, and fire risk analysis, and studies of ecosystem physiology. The NDII uses a normalized difference formulation and therefore the index values increases uh, with the increasing water content. Uh, the value of this index ranges uh, from minus one to one and the common range for vegetation, green vegetation is um, 0 0.02 to 0 0.6. Uh, the moisture stress index uh, is a simple ratio and therefore inverted, inverted relative to the NDII. Higher values indicate greater water stress and less water, less water content. The common range of, the, of this index is for green vege vegetation is around 0 0.4 to 2. All right, now that you know the basics of remote sensing of vegetation, you are ready to check out the next video in this series that will talk about the first application of vegetation remote sensing that is forest land cover chain mapping.